Hello and welcome to this video. I'm aiming this at people studying OCR, GCSE, computer science, and I want to just introduce the paper one part of this course and also talk about my videos and how you might use those as well. So as you probably know, there are two parts to this qualification. You've got two exam papers, paper one and paper two. Paper one is called computer systems. Paper two has got a longer name, computational thinking, algorithms and programming. To get a grade for this course, you've got to do both exams and they're both worth exactly the same amount. Now, paper one is more theory, paper two is more programming. There'll be a separate video talking more about paper two on a separate playlist, but for now, let's focus on paper one. So paper one, as you might've seen based on those topics really quickly, you know, you've got hardware, you've got networks, you've got some software, and you've got impacts of computing. So there is a lot of content there, but only a few actual distinct topics, I would say. Now, this paper, Computer Systems, is, like I said, the theory paper. Now, I've put theory in quotes because it's a little bit meaningless, right? It's not programming. We can say that fairly safely. No code, no SQL, apart from a tiny bit on SQL injections for security. And like paper two, actually, this exam is one hour, 30 minutes, unless you've got extra time, and it's worth 80 marks, which means if you are doing it for an hour and a half, you've got 10 minutes spare at the end if you are trying to spend about a minute per mark, which is what I would recommend. And the structure of the paper is quite straightforward. I'll have more to say for paper two. Just a mix of short and medium questions, so short sort of one to three marks, medium say three to six marks. Although there will be one eight marker, which you need to be aware of. This is what they call an extended response question. Here's a picture of a one from a sample paper. And you'll see they're marked with, a, with an asterisk, with a star. So you can tell you're on that question, not only because it's eight marks, but also because of the asterisks. Now what this means is, you have to be a little bit more careful how you answer these questions because you will get assessed on the quality of written communication. So you can't answer in bullet points. It's got to flow logically. It's got to have correct spelling and grammar and so on. But in terms of exam technique, I have made a separate video on how to approach these different lengths of questions that will be linked in the description. Just on paper one, this is not particularly specific to just this exam, but of course, make sure for the actual exam you go in with a black pen, a pencil, a rubber, in case you make a mistake when drawing a diagram, say in pencil, and a ruler. And you know, pencil sharpener and have backups, just be really sensible of what you take in. But the main thing is, no calculator is allowed. There will be some binary and hexadecimal conversion questions, I'm sure, you'll need to be able to do those without using a calculator. So ensure you've done that practice without it. If you've practiced using a calculator, that's not very helpful for your actual exam. Right now, I just wanna mention some advice for how to get ready for paper one, which to be honest applies to most of your exams, most of your subjects. Make sure you are using the specification. The people who get really top marks are really good at making sure they cover every single point. It doesn't matter if you've learned something beyond the specification for the exam, it's great, personally, but if you've learned something really advanced and it's not on the course, well, it won't help you in the exam very much. So make sure, ideally, you know every single word on this document, you can define every word, you understand what it means. OCR are really good, at least for computer science with their specification. If you open the document on the website, it has a really clear content part, which tells you exactly what is and isn't required. Unfortunately, not every subject is going to be this clear, but they've done a really good job with this particular specification. And there'll be a link to this website in the description. It has things like past papers on it as well, which you should definitely do, but only after you're comfortable with the actual content. And just a quick specific advice for this specification, there have been a few different OCR computing, OCR computer science courses in recent years. Make sure you're using the one labeled J277. That is the current specification code. The previous one was J276. So they sound really similar, but there is a slight difference. So be careful whatever you're using. If you stumble across, say, an AQA revision guide, or you watch a video of mine on Edexcel, say, it might still be useful because a lot of the content overlaps, but be really cautious because there are quite a few changes between the courses. Which does link to my videos. You might be watching this in the playlist I've got. If not, I've got a playlist which covers all of the content for paper one, and it is specific to OCR, although some of the videos apply to other courses too. So you might see they're uploaded at different dates, or some have got more views than others because they're in several playlists. 
but it means it's even more important if you are going to watch my videos you please stick to the playlist because just using recommended videos or different exam board playlists might lead to you revising stuff which isn't actually on this exam. And my videos cover all the content so really it depends on where you're at in terms of what you are going to be using them for. You could use them to learn the content maybe throughout year 10 and year 11 maybe for mocks if you're not sure on a particular topic but ultimately I hope they're also useful too right before the exams if you're just going over it and reminding yourself and getting that extra consolidation in the weeks and even days leading up to the exam. And if you are watching it a bit earlier on maybe and you want to take notes, that's perfect and I think that's a really good idea. Just make sure it's not just a case of just mindlessly copying stuff down. Make sure you actually use them later on. But if you want more guidance on how to revise computing, I have got another video on that. Again, that'll be linked in the description. But otherwise, the only thing I've got to say for now is massive good luck for this exam if you've got it coming up soon and I really hope my videos will be useful if you choose to use them.